everybody. Welcome to this episode of The Archive. I am St. Godric, and here with me today, I have, let me see if I can get the title correct, Lord Baron Grand Duke Kodiak from the Kingdom of Dragonspine. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing fantastic. You forgot Monster in the Sand, though. That's really proud of that one. That's that is a new not one. on your wiki. Oh, I know. It's only on my orc, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. How you, you doing? See, good. You can't blame me for things that you don't have on your wiki yet, man. I, I know. <laughs> if, I only, if I only knew how to do the wiki myself, this would have been taken care of, but I got to ask go. for favors. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I am glad to have you on. Uh, for those who have not seen it, uh, last week, I actually went on to Kodiak's show, Kingdom of Kodiak, uh, which is a show that you, is it's a weekly show that he puts on on his kingdom page where he has different people from his kingdom and outside of his kingdom uh come on had a great time was there we spent two hours almost hour and a half together it was a ton of fun so we will be plugging that show throughout the whole episode today because it was awesome i had a blast i I hope you did as well hopefully of course of course (laughs) It, it was a good time i really enjoyed it so i'm gonna go ahead kodiak and without further ado, jump into our first question. Uh, give our listeners a little bit of your background uh, before you got into Ampguard. Who who was Kodiak before you donned Kodiak? Oh, oh good golly. Okay. Uh, so uh, before Chris became Kodiak, uh, I was a sports player in high school. I didn't do anything nerdy at all. There was one play that I was stage crew for in high school. And that was it. Like I I just played sports and played video games and slept a whole bunch. Uh, I (laughs) actually learned about RPGs while I was at basic training. Uh, One of the guys, one of the recruits that uh, was in my unit while I was going through basic training in Fort Knox uh, made paper dice at basic and Hmm. showed us how to roll D and D characters. And I was like, well, like I'm only really interested if I could be like a half dragon, half angel. And he's like, I can, I can do that. So like I stopped doing like the goofy workout stuff at the end of the night and came into his room and like, he showed me how to roll the dice, how to make characters. Hmm. And I get, I came back from the army and was like, I want to do this. So I found D and D and uh, moving to New Mexico, found people that hit people with foam six. It was an <laughs> amp guard and then found amp guard. D and D the great gateway drug. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, for our viewers, if you have any questions throughout this for Kodiak, feel free, throw those in the chat. They should be able to pop up here and we'll, we'll throw some of those in spice it up a little bit as we go. So Kodiak, you said sports beforehand. Um, mm-hmm. Did that, has that benefited you at all in amp guard? What, I mean, what sports and did any of those skills transfer into the game and give you an advantage there? You think? Uh, okay. Well, so first part, uh, I've played basketball, baseball, football, soccer, lacrosse, volleyball, <laughs> field hockey, uh, Frisbee, golf, golf, tennis, um, if you can get a ball and challenge me to do something, I was at in a younger years more than willing to try to take on a challenge. <laughs> um, it, it has helped and not helped. So interestingly enough, when my first day going to dragon spine, um, I had my persona picked out. I, I was excited for the RP experience of it, but I figured the foam sorting foam sword fighting side of it wouldn't matter because I was so much more athletic than any possible nerd, at least in my head. <laughs> and then um, I, I tap swords with Sir Sane Ironhand and he smoked me for the rest of my life. And uh, yeah, I realized real quick that I may be fast for my size. I'm going to be bigger for bigger than the average player. But if I don't have the right mechanics and, and the mm-hmm. right, headspace for it i'll never get any better so um it was good because i could make those adjustments i could i knew how to from learning how to work with my body in sports but um i had to drop a huge ego to Mm. uh to be willing to do that and it it was shocking 
But now I, I can't get away from it. I <laughs> love Amcar too much. I want to take a moment to take a break from our regularly scheduled programming and give a plug for my business, Dragon Masters. Over at Dragon Masters, I make woven belts for Amp Guard, Dagger here, and any other LARP that you can think of. At this point, I have hundreds of belts across most of Amp Guard's kingdoms and across many different realms and Dagger here in Belgarth. And my goal with these belts are to make belts that are going to last longer than you. My goal is to give you a legacy belt that you will be able to wear for as long as you want to wear it, but then will also be able to pass it down to that next generation, that next player in your belt line, at your park, friend, family, whatever it happens to be. All the belts that I make are made of paracord and macrame and are made of the highest quality materials. If you're interested in taking a look at my belts, there's a link in the description below for Etsy. Uh, on there, I have all sorts of belts that are ready to ship out the next day. These are ones I've already made, but if you're interested in something custom, ch check out my Dragon Masters Facebook page. You can go through and see all of the custom work that I have ever made and I would love to get you a custom knight's belt or a custom squire belt or maybe you're looking for something in particular for a fighting company we also I will also do discounts uh, if you want to order a large amount for your fighting company your park uh, do do discounts there so thank you for listening to my plug let's get back to the main action <laughs> well What's funny, so I kind of had a different experience. You were lucky enough to have a warlord at your first day. Mm -hmm. You see, I came in as a semi-athletic, slender, fast kid at 18 years old and was just mm -hmm. the best at my park because just I just was. I was younger and, and more right. athletic, played sports. And, and so I went two years before I fought anyone better than me, like really much, like a lot better than me. And so I thought I was hot stuff. Right. And then we had a tournament and the local, the kingdom seat, the duchy traveled up and they had like eight people that beat me yeah. and bad. You're talking about getting the ego inflated out of you. Like that balloon got popped real quick and real hard that day. <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. I'm not, I'm, so I have Sir Shane in my park. Uh, Sir Elmerin was at my park. Sir Sheehan is now back at my park. Uh, Xander the Reaper, who is now Sir Xander the Reaper, is at my park. Uh, Sir Anatole is a is travels to our <laughs> like the the great sword knights of our kingdom have spent the last four years making me not the best <laughs> sword fighter in the kingdom. Yeah, it's but it's an honor because mm. um, they've. They sent me to a GOTC, it would be two years ago now, to fight in a zero to four tournament um, because that's where I was. And um, after the tournament, they were like, you didn't need to be there. You you cleaned up. I did really well. I blew up my hamstring that same day. Um, so I didn't get to fight in the five to five and up to see if I had made that much more ground. But uh, yeah, it, it it's it's a double blade. It, like if you don't have the the mental fortitude getting beat like that all the time you yeah. quit but like i give myself that credit for sure and i it sounds like you are too i'm one of the people that needs to get beat because that's how i get better yeah, and absolutely. so i i'm one of the people that learns through people showing me uh you can you can tell me what i'm doing wrong and that goes so far but i need you to hit me in that shoulder six or eight times before i can learn to, to actually change my stance a little bit. And Absolutely. If I didn't have one of them telling me to stop jumping, uh, I, you would have me, a f you know, two, three feet off the air trying to throw uh, like reverse tennis elbow <laughs> shots because I was like, well, I can jump higher and I'll just jump over swords. And yeah, no, it, I needed someone to be like, hey, yes, we, we understand you're physically gifted, but you don't know how to amp guard. Let's teach you how to amp guard. And it's worked out, I think. Good. I see. I'm at the point now where I am the old man at my park telling the new young players, hey, you guys should stop doing that now before it hurts you. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, we're fine, old man. And then they hear me pop and crackle after I get up from taking a knee. And I, I've been playing for 12, 11, 12 years at this yeah. point. And so, like, I'm not that old, but all of those athletic things I was able to do at 18 years old mm -hmm. that I didn't learn proper mechanics for. And I just relied on 18 year old energy and speed yeah. are now every time I throw a reverse rat, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> like I, I do get the benefit of joining amp guard in my mid thirties. So I'm 38 now I was 34 when I started roughly. Uh, so I was already mm. 
and you know, military injuries, old broken body. Like, so I was already like, no, I, I need to stretch. I don't, obviously don't stretch enough. I need to drink water and stuff like that. But uh, the young kids are the people that want to hang out with me. So <laughs> I love it. So I got a question here before we get back. Our first uh, interruption of the show, but we love interruptions from Dusty Marshall. Is this where Kodiak is putting his beard on the line for a fundraiser? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, no, but if you go to Dragonspine's <laughs> page, I am putting my, my, uh, ponytail on the line for Dragonspine fundraiser. Uh, so yeah, if you, if, if my team can get to $300 raised, uh, I will have to eat, I will have to do the one chip challenge, mm. uh, the hot sauce challenge, the ice bucket challenge, take a pie to the face, wear Crocs to court that the kingdom picks, cut my ponytail, uh, long list, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, Smiley, Smiley gets excited when I'm on screen because there's risk of me shaving my beard again, uh, which we did for St. Jude's last year. And it was an awesome event. And Smiley mm. is a fantastic coordinator for that thing. Um, uh, I think more people were hurt that he shaved his mustache. But uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it's, he shaved he shaved his brand. You know, yeah. like that, that mustache is what makes him his money, man. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I mean, if it's gonna, if it can help my kingdom make money, mm. I absolutely want to do it. Um, I, you know, we, there was just a lot of conversation about, was it shaving my head or was it cutting the ponytail? Uh, and I have some strong, uh, some people who would get rather upset if it was my whole head. So I get doing that ponytail. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah. So going back, you said before AmpGuard, it was D and D, and then into another sword fighting game, and then to AmpGuard. Was that was the other sword fighting game a, a name I would recognize, or was it backyard friends in a backyard just kind of messing around? It was seven people who were playing D and D together, being like, "Oh, I really want to go sword fighting out in the back. Let's make swords." And there were uh, we would consider them to be flat blades. And I said, "I will not play this game unless mine is a lightsaber." which means an Omni blade. Now I know that. And it was orange. And I came over the next time and they had a two handed orange Omni blade. And they're like, let's go sword fight. And, uh, when that D and D group dissolved, I was like, well, I still want, I want to RP and I really like hitting people with these swords. So I did a search, uh, but I had been to the Ren fair. So I knew that it cool. existed kind of, and, uh, there was amp card. So, that's awesome. I uh, I went to my first Renaissance Fair ever this year oh, and yeah. had a blast. And it's it's crazy to me that I hadn't gone to one beforehand because it's right up my alley. You know, yeah. like I had I had so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I volunteer for all the work most of the time, so I'm setting up the the pit so that we can have fighting. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the archery booth. I'm selling swords. And this last Renaissance Fair, the Sunday of when there's an entire shift, a bunch of the knights were like, "No, come come to the beer tent." and sit with us and i just got drunk at Ren renfair and that cool. was that was fun too so <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah so so tell me a little bit about your early days at amp guard what, what was park like what were the things that stuck out to you what hooked you what, what was early amp guard like for cody at okay so um i i had no idea how to get garb or anything mm. like that so i was showing up in uh, shorts and a muscle shirt and Chuck Taylors. Um, the uniform, man. The the uniform, right? And uh, I didn't, I knew that I wanted to play a druid. I wanted to play archer, but I couldn't get a bow. So I was like, oh, I'm going to play a druid. Um, I had a story that I wanted to tell. Uh, my first month at Dragon's Final Las Cruces, my first month in Amp Guard, I went and bought um, the little crystals uh, that are on necklaces that are the colors of everyone's um, star sign. So I went around with a small little notebook and I was like, Hey, what's your, what's your birthday? And they're like, what? And um, I gave them out as gifts from the great, the great spirit, which is like for my story is what told me to go from Western New York to New Mexico. Cool. Um, and so I like, I was inventing my own RP to, so I could tell my story, um, making great friends. I was six months in and, uh, I was, uh, founding a household, the order of the ash, which is, I'm still, 
uh, we're still going strong. My room, my roommate and me were the uh, founding members. Um, I was going to arts and science with no arts and science and just asking the person who was hosting to tell me about Amcard and tell me mm-hmm. stories. Um, like we mentioned on uh, Kingdom of Kodiak, I, I watched all the ALU videos before I started because I like to study a little bit. So I was asking them questions about what I saw in the videos so I could understand stuff better and um, just get if if I could never get to the talent level in the game, at least I would know of the game mm-hmm. so that I could contribute somewhere down the road um but you know it was three days a week i was arts and science fighters practice park day and then you know uh we went to covid years later Mm -hmm. and i just kept it three days a week by starting kingdom kingdom of kodiak that's awesome let's let's go ahead and do the kingdom of kodiak questions because i i'm fascinated with so okay. i love content creation i love watching it i'm a long form i'm a sucker for long form content i love the amgard leadership stuff i love your show i love the whack podcast okay. so what what was the the idea going into kingdom of kodiak uh what made you want to start it and and kind of how did it get get rolling Okay. So, um, I've mentioned my roommate a couple of times. His name's Devrick Stormcrest as an amp carter. Uh, he really wanted to do the bear and badger podcast, <laughs> which was going to be him and me essentially talking about amp card, maybe reviewing movies in a rift format, something like that. And, he, but he lived in iron mountains at the time mm. and we went and we were getting ready to shut down. And I'm like, I can't wait anymore. I'm making a show. I'm going to do it. Um, I have an idea. I'm going to call it Kingdom of Kodiak. It's going to be goofy. You know, um, I'm going to bring people on. I'm going to ask them questions. They typically wouldn't get asked about their time in Amcard, but then give them some serious content so that there's something to stick for. Give my audience an example. If they haven't seen Kingdom of Kodiak, when you say a silly question that they don't normally get asked... Give, okay. give them a give them a, a question. OK, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with my favorite funny question. Then. <laughs> um, if, if Amp Guard is making a live action movie, who is playing you and what is your theme song? And it's it's one of my favorite questions. But we have uh, the bare necessities, which is actually a pun that we stole from a car trip. There was uh, seven of us piled into a van that drove from <laughs> Las Cruces, New Mexico to Yuma, Arizona to do a day trip. So we did a 26 hour turnaround uh, just to go fight in Yuma for a day. And uh, one of our players, Sin, uh, really doesn't like bear puns. And the other six members of the car decided that's all we were going to do. So I decided that this start of Kingdom of Kodiak was going to be the bear necessities. And I would apologize to Sin <laughs> every time. It, the joke is that he's at home right now every time I say it and just be like Kodiak <laughs> um, but yeah uh, I, I like asking funny stuff of people my my fans early on were very willing to feed those questions uh, having Deverick move in we the Mountain Dew question is really important now mm-hmm. because he's a Baja <laughs> Blast guy and I'm a Code Red guy Um asking about food. It's really interesting to see how much people are willing to pay for breakfast. Uh, so, but I know uh, you, I said 12 bucks and you yeah. thought I, it sounded like I was crazy. Well, like $12. So, Sir Glenn came on and said like, uh, it depends how good it is, but let's say $300. And I was like, huh? Okay. Um, that's no. my life. That's like three weeks of groceries right there, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Sir, Sir Glenn bougie though. So, that but college yeah, professor, man. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just, uh, we were going, Amp Guard as a whole, but Dragon's Fine specifically was going through a hard time with COVID. And mm. I wanted to be loose and I wanted people, uh, that's who I am too. Like if you meet me in person and I'm not telling jokes, I'm probably hurt. <laughs> but even when I'm hurt, I probably throw something at my own expense. Um, and it's, it's, it's made a good, uh, it's made a decent show, I think. Ninety-one mm-hmm. episodes as of as of yours. So that's awesome. Um, 
Yeah. Well, I will tell you after afterwards, I went and I sat down with my wife and did the funny questions with her. So you asked it. I paused. I'm like, all right, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And she got most of them right, except the uh, the actor one. She said that I would have picked Jason. She thought I would have put picked Jason Momoa because oh, I love that dude. Okay. And I'm like, no, yeah, I don't look enough like him. It's got to it's got to be Zachary Levi. Spoiler. That was my uh, my answer there, because we at least look similar enough yeah. to where it's OK. Sure. <laughs> That's awesome. So what has been 91 episodes? That is a really long time. Uh, so what what has kept you going for 91 episodes? Well, originally it was, there's enough people, as long as people keep wanting to come on, which spoilers, mm-hmm. if you're looking to come on KOK, just reach out. I, I will find time for you. Uh, but I always thought that there was something there. There would mm-hmm. always be people there. There's always, there would always be stories to tell. And then I got like crazy in the middle there where I was like, well, Supernatural had 250 something episodes. I need to be one better than my favorite show. <laughs> like I'm going to go one past whatever they had. I think it's 256 or something like that. So I'm shooting for 257. And then a couple months later, I was like, man, if I make it to a hundred, I may make my hundredth episode like a retirement and let someone else mm-hmm. have the stage. Um, Cause where I, as I love good content too, someone else's perspective may be better. And now it's just like, if I have people on the show, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And if no one shows up, then maybe I'll have to consider not doing it anymore. But um, yeah, originally it was just like, I want, (laughs) thank you. Yeah. I, I just want to make content for people, make Mm -hmm. people happy, uh, gives people something to tune in on. And you would be surprised how happy people get when you read their name as a yep. question. Yep. You're like, Oh, still have wanted to know or lightning had this question. And they're like, Oh yes, my question. Awesome. Cool. You know? So it's, it's, it's an evolving thing and who knows what it'll be tomorrow. That's awesome. I, I think 91 episodes is a ton of episodes and mm-hmm. congratulations on almost a hundred. Cause you. it's, you know, if you're talking an hour and a half per episode on average, right? That's plus your, your lead time, the 30 minutes before and the 30 minutes after that you're chatting with the person. If you do any of your video editing, like that's, that's a ton of time. And so that's, that's a really awesome endeavor that I I am sure has made so many people just laugh and smile, especially during COVID. Uh, I'm going to pause before we get to more questions about the show. You said supernatural, which is one of my favorite shows also. Mm -hmm. So Sam, Dean, Cass, or, um, Oh, uh, oh, why am I blanking the demon's name? Oh, uh, Crowley. Crowley. Yeah. Pick, pick one. <sighs> dean. Uh, so I, I feel like I'm a Dean. All of my friends feel like I'm a Sammy. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, I don't know. It, I, I want to say I'm a big, like gruff guy. That's a leader mm-hmm. and like, uh, can just turn it off and just be the soldier. But I have the long hair and I'm tall and I, I have feelings and I care about them. <laughs> so I want to say Dean, everyone else would probably say Sammy. I get that. I, uh, <laughs> I love Dean is my favorite out of the brothers. Crowley is my favorite character though. Okay. I, I love Crowley. He's just yeah. so funny to me. <laughs> so we'll do another one too. Favorite <laughs> side character, favorite non major character. Oh, good golly. Um, Jody. Mm. Jody's yep. a great one. Yep. She's she's awesome. I like the uh, the Cajun vampire. Yeah, you remember yeah. him? <laughs> yeah. So, so um, Ezra J just retired from her full time job, and like I, my friends got a cameo for her, and I was cool. like, oh, like Jody would be because she's she was supposed to be the wayward like the leader of the mm. wayward sisters, and. Uh, a strong female character that survived in in uh, Supernatural is just you unheard, know, of. unheard of. So <laughs> and, and Jody did it. So um, uh, and they're like, well, we got we got um, Arya's uh, sword teacher from Game of Thrones, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's that's great too. Don't get me wrong. It's just like to me, like if there's a if you're looking for a strong female character, mm-hmm. it's just unfortunate that she didn't get to be a main character in her own show. But also she is a fantastic person outside of um, supernatural. So 
a her and Bobby spinoff would have been funny. Oh God, <laughs> he's hilarious. He is so funny, uh, and that's that would offend the other side characters because, like my friend, my roommate specifically is like Bobby coming into the room and calling you an idiot would make your day, and I'm like, yes, it would. It would. Yes, it would. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so back to the content creation stuff, okay. Kingdom of Kodiak. Okay. Um, what advice would you have for someone who is interested in some form of content creation, whether it's for an individual, like they want to make some for them or they're interested for their park or kingdom, kind of like what, what your idea, you wanted to mm-hmm. bring some levity during a hard time and, and get, you know, give a platform for the people in your kingdom. What, what's advice? What would you tell someone who's wanting to get into con- t- content creating for Amp Guard? Okay. Um, do you have a part of amp card that you love enough to forfeit more time to. Mm. Um, and I say that with all the negative connotations with the understanding that I said, yes, like I love amp card. Amp card has saved my life at least once. So I, I take it as a, a personal honor to be able to give more amp guard out but if you have content that you think you would love giving more time to in amp guard and you have the market so like i couldn't have started kingdom of kodiak if i didn't know i had 10 people ready to go right Mm -hmm. away like the the behind the scenes of setting something up like that is the 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 communication the pr reaching out to people that maybe you don't know and be like hey do you want to come on kingdom of kodiak you want to you know i i do night shows like every four weeks but like if you can only make this week i'll do this week and you know also have your ego prepared for someone to be (laughs) like no i don't want to do that and being like oh is it me or is it you know Mm -hmm. do i make bad content or is it just this person doesn't want to be on a show so um do you have the extra time? Do you have the, the the materials essentially that you need? And do you do you have the fortitude to be like, if someone says no, it's not me. It's something going on with them and, mm. and keep pushing forward would be my advice. That's great advice because I, I will second the, the back office work is some of the most difficult, uh, especially when I was first starting. It's like, man, I don't want to get three episodes into this and then have all my friends bail on me and then not have people like you and I have never met in person until we came on each other's show. And now that's not even in person, but never met or really chatted at all. And that was intimidating to me before I started. It was like, man, is are people actually going to want to come on here? But I found that Amp Garters love to talk. So it's not too, like, I think you'll always have guests and always have people that want to. For sure. Well, fingers crossed. One, um, can I, uh, shout out to Yang the Merciful. You mentioned the editing of KOK, like the music in and out. Mm. That's not me. Uh, cool. My friend from Wyvern and Drew Sierra Vista, uh, Yang, was like, hey, um, would you mind if I put an intro and outro on <laughs> your episodes and put them to uh, YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, I would love that. And he doesn't he doesn't want anything for it. He just wants he thinks KOK is something to invest time and energy into. Cool. And that makes you that humbles you, right? Because you're like, there's another person who thinks what you're doing is worth it. So mm-hmm. uh it's a, just a huge shout out to Yang for for helping get that going. And then yeah, like people again, if you want to come on KOK, just reach out. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. There, uh, and it doesn't matter. How about this? I feel like sometimes on these shows, people are like, "Oh, well, I don't have. I'm not a knight, or I'm not a master, or mm-hmm. I'm not in kingdom office." So, if if you are passionate about a topic and you think that you can fill up an hour, come chat. Like, yeah. let's do it. You know. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, like, it, especially for like KOK. Uh, if you don't think you have enough content, I have an hour's worth of content <laughs> on a list. I will get you there. Um, I love to talk. And if we need to, I will just start a conversation about knighthood and then it will never end. Um, so, which I feel that's there are a few topics in the game that every amp garter has an opinion on. Knighthood is one of them. Yeah. And so, if, if at any point the, it starts to go downhill, just throw a couple of knighthood questions in there. <laughs> For and sure. it'll spice it up. You'll be yeah. good. <laughs> That's awesome. I've got a question here from Dusty. I am assuming it it, it is a inside joke. 
because I don't know what he's talking about. He says, is it possible to have an amp guard wide RP involving all of the kingdoms? I don't know if it's an inside joke. Um, So a little insight to what was going on in my second reign as monarch. So it would have been a year and a half ago. Uh, uh, Burlands and Dragon's Fine were going to do a co-op. Um, a co-op RP was, uh, and have like magical areas that were going to manipulate people's classes so that like, if you showed up to park day, ready to do X, you may be doing Y and we can explain it with magic. That's being all wonky and whatnot. Mm. Uh, could we do a king, uh, a game wide RP? Yes. Um, I think it would be beneficial. It would. Uh, so I asked the COM, um, I put in a request for the COM at the last uh, GOTC to have historical documents for each kingdom. Like that was my proposal I wanted mm-hmm. to have because we we should have that on record somewhere that AIBOD has access to all of them, whether it's fictional or non-fictional or both. Mm-hmm. And yeah, set up a uh, Dragonspine had a lot of fun with a text only RP <laughs> during COVID. I had people in and out of that. There were people asking questions outside of like, where's your story coming from? It takes a, it's going to take a couple of people who are like, yeah, I'm willing to throw in all the RP and I, I'm willing to be the voice and tell the story. But, you know, we could find a, a park in the middle of Mississippi or somewhere closer to the middle of the, the country and be like, hey, if you come here, it's 72 hours of nothing but RP in the Amp Guard world, you know, and Dragonspine wants to do something like that mm-hmm. in our kingdom. Uh, I think yes. And I think, it, I, I think, Godric, I think you're right. It would be beneficial. Um, it needs someone like Smiley to do it, though. <laughs> it, you know, you you have national recognition, and uh, as what we learned from last week on KOK, I'm I'm still only a Southwest guy at this point. <laughs> no, for sure. I think one of the hard parts for me as a new player uh, coming from D and D first, I am a very lore and background and character building player in D and D. And when I got to Amp Guard, they said to make a character. I said, okay, what's like the first thing I asked is what what lore or what world building do I need to know to build my character around? And when they told me there isn't any, that was very hard for me as a new player because we we exist in a game in Amp Guard where the, you know, the 13th century Mongolian needs to be able to coexist with the half gold dragon, half minotaur. Yep. And that just is really difficult. Excuse me. is really difficult. And so I get why a game wide RP would be hard because there would be some people who would alienate, but I think there are ways that we could do it well. And I've been advocating for this for a while. So I'll use, thank you, Dusty. I appreciate the question because I will keep pushing my points. Uh, there, there's a LARP in the UK called Alliance LARP and I love their setup. And they've got 12 different clans, essentially, and each clan has a different motif, a different theme, different personality traits. Um, Think Avatar The Last Airbender. When you walk into Bossing Say, you know you're in Bossing Say because of the colors, because of all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And within those 12, almost anybody will be able to find something that they connect with to build a character around. And that is still an incredibly broad sense that people could connect with, but it gives them something to latch onto. It gives them some guidance that I think would be super beneficial. Yeah. And uh, to expand about that, you said Alliance LARP. There's an Alliance LARP in America. Mm. And in February, Deverick and I are going to go spend a weekend at their event. And we're going to pull cool. ideas from them, you know, because theirs is based around just RP and it is there is combat and there is other stuff but it's it's centered around RP and storytelling and yeah we should we should try to find a way to do that because we can have a, you know a tournament day or a tournament mm-hmm. week or a GOTC where there's six tournaments and a bunch of battle games but if we had a two or three day event where it was you walk on site you cross this barrier you have to be an RP you know everything is RP'd the story is told there's, you know, you get what you get out of it is that you get to tell your story or tell other people's story with them. Mm. Um, instead of doing mine, which is I journal 
and send them into the kingdom and be like, this is what's happened to me in the last six months. And then I just involve individuals as the story makes sense for them to be mm. part of it. You know, let's get everyone involved. But it, again, it takes a national name to make something like that happen. Yeah. I'm going to correct myself. It's Empire LARP is the one I was thinking okay. of. I just, I, okay. just Googled, I just Googled it a little bit and they have, you should check it out when we get off air. They have a, a wiki that has all of like, you pull up your nation that you're interested in and it's got, here is a starter guide to make garb. Here's a starter guide for characters. Here's what your camp could look like. Super newbie friendly. And I think Amp Guard could benefit from that. That's awesome. I love so that. I'm going to, we'll go back a little bit here. You said your second reign as mm-hmm. king, correct? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I always ask this of my crown knights because it's something that I just don't fully understand. Mm-hmm. What drove you to do king once? And then after you did king once, what in the world drove you to do king a second time? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm I, like I mentioned before on prior service, uh, but uh, not a positive that got me so inspired to go hard. Um, but also I was a full adult when I came into the game. Mm. Um, I felt like I could lead, I could help. All I needed to know was about the game, but I did have a player at my park when I, you know, a couple months in was making suggestions about how we could improve stuff. And they tried to put me in my place about it being, you know, not my position to say anything. Mm. And I'm like, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, a couple months later, I wasn't, I had kind of diffused that uh, anger in my system. My park uh, had an all thing and said, hey, he's only been playing for four months, but he want, he knows how to do the battle games. He's our park champion. All <laughs> guys that don't have dues the previous champion pulls $10 out of his pocket and hands it. And they're like all in favor of allowing this to happen. So Kodiak can be our champion unanimous thing. And I'm like, well, if they think I can be even a champion, a a leader at the local level, I could probably do it at a kingdom level. Mm -hmm. And since I'm I'm kind of obsessed with knighthood, I spent a lot of time helping or not, not helping, but like mentioning my ideas to the, 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 the kingdom King, the monarch, about my thoughts on who should be knighted and where. And then people started realizing that I kept track of like my own ideas for who should get awards. And um, I got, I, I did local monarch and was like, this is fun and also easy. <laughs> so I did it once we were in COVID and uh, I think the second one was, I knew I could do it again. I still had the spoons for it. It was really unlikely that there was going to be a whole lot of people running because Amp Guard was shut down. Mm. But also, like, I refused to let Dragon's Fine fail. Like, I was like, oh, no, I'm going to be on Discord an hour early. Mm. I'm going to, I'm, I'll stay until the last person gets off if I, if I have to. I'm going to run this KOK show so that there's another reason for people to come. I'm going to get a, get on on off days. I'm going to have deck building days for people and just try to find a way to keep people busy and keep w- what we could of amp guard going. And I'm just too stubborn to be like, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not in kingdom office right now. I'm in local office hmm. and I'm already like, it's three months and I'm already getting the itch for it's like, okay, maybe, maybe I could run for a lower kingdom office and just try to, cause all, all I want is for dragons fine to be in a good spot because hmm the behind the scenes, at least from what I was hearing was it was in a rough spot. So whatever I could do to help. And I felt like being in office was what would do that. That's awesome. What, how do you evaluate if you have the spoons to do that? Uh, kind of, cause that, I feel like a lot of people in amp guard get mm-hmm. involved in things that they shouldn't because they fail or they recognize and don't pay attention to how many spoons they have left to, to hand out to the different things that you need to do. So how, how do you go about evaluating? Do you have enough spoons to do this? So I, I went to school. <laughs> I lean on my schooling. I went to school for psychology. So I know introspection is not something I'm supposed to do, but it's something I'm capable of doing. Um, But I look at it. I look at whatever the event is, whatever the thing that needs to be done is. 
I ask myself, is there someone that could do it that's not me? Are they willing to do it? Can I convince them to do it? Mm. If any one of those are no, I will just do it. And if I don't have the spoons, I will find a second. uh, I will uh, essentially have a second in command that can hold the fort until I have spoons. But again, like if I haven't run into the situation yet where I've looked at an idea that I wanted to do and was like, I may not be able to do this on my, like I may not be able to push forward on my own. I may may need someone to inspire Mm -hmm. me to go forth. Uh, we we did the uh, Dragon's Fine Coffer during COVID, during the beginnings of Kingdom of Kodiak, while I was the monarch, and also trying to make sure that everything was happening on Discord. And I got on the other side of it and was looking for more to do. Mm. Um, I I I have a weird position with Amcard because again I feel like I owe Amcard. And it's not, I owe Dragonspine. It's not that I owe the kingdom of Dragonspine. Um, I went to that first GOTC and made so many new friends and, and met so many great people that have been, you know, on KOK now, but also have joined my households or, mm. you know, just reach out and say hi every so often. And uh, where I was as a person at that point, if I didn't have those things, it would, I would be a wreck so um even when it feels like it, it may be a low spoon day and like oh if i have one i've got enough let's <laughs> let's do amp guard you know yeah. so that's awesome because i feel i feel like at least in for me i've done i've done one kingdom reign and mm-hmm. i thought i had the spoons for it and i probably did at the beginning but towards the middle and definitely towards the end, it didn't feel like that. And I feel like it's one of those things where it can be very difficult to judge. And I like what you said of having someone who is there to pick up the slack on the days that you don't feel that you can do it. Yeah. Cause that's something I didn't have. And I think that would have been a very helpful and very key thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when, um, when we had to move everything into, um, Discord, or even now when we're trying, we're still trying to figure out what the Kingdom Champion does, right? Because every park has their own. What does the Kingdom Champion do? Well, so far it's been put out challenges, maybe run tournaments or help run tournaments, mm-hmm. you know, have battle games at Kingdom events. Cool. Um, but having a person there to be like, hey, I need two classes for Discord next week. I can get one. Can you help me go find another one? Mm. And that was where Still Hats and Annabelle Lee's and um, Devericks and and Spookies, um, uh, Randalls, uh, th- th- those people came in. And they're like, yeah, no, um, I I will do this because I can see. Th- well, they didn't say this. I assume they say this because I <laughs> I want to believe they did. I see that you're putting the effort in, and if I put some effort in, you'll be able to put more effort in down the road. If I don't put the effort in here, this may be the last one for you. So, you know, um, and also much like the evolution of like what I was doing as a character, I know Dame Azrael Jade has like eight runs as as Kingdom Monarch and I have two and she is actually like my inspiration as a player. So I will... Uh, be doing kingdom office and being in the monarch until I surpass her just like the supernatural theory, which she's a big fan of too. So it's like a, there's a lot of in joke there. (laughs) I love it. I love it. What, what would you say was the most difficult part of being King period, but Mm -hmm. then also, especially being king during COVID. Cause I feel like that probably had some unique challenges there that most people who were ruling other in any other time wouldn't have experienced. So the being king period is this, it's the same thing as any other authority figure in any other, in any other level, getting people to understand what you are and are not able to do or cannot mm-hmm. do like, um, there is no shadow government that's it's there never has been for any in any location ever it's a joke that was started 
30 years ago in Amcar, but it was started 70 years ago by general people talking about government. It's just we people inherently don't like their authority figures. And when their authority figures step out of office, but their ideals are still present, we think it's a shadow government. So getting people to just understand what we were doing and being very transparent was was hard Mm -hmm. because there was points where it's like, I've given you all of the information I have, please. Like if there was more, I'd give it, but I I have no more Mm -hmm. to tell you. Like, this is all, all the facts I have. Um, in COVID, um, as the King, I did handle a lot more of like local discrepancy where I was taking phone calls for two or three hours trying to talk people through Mm -hmm. like, Hey, this is crap. And what do I do about this? And I, you know, um, we can't meet and, but this person's saying this and how do I handle this or trying to keep level heads. And I had to give kudos to my team for that because that was one of those instances where I was like, I, yeah, I can take this three hour phone call, but there's another four people that need to be talked to. And my Mm -hmm. team was like, don't worry. You take your phone call. We will talk to these people and we'll meet together and talk about what the results of it are. And, you know, maybe that too, like if you think running a show is, has a lot of extra time behind it, be a monarch in a kingdom that can't play amp guard <laughs> because I was, I don't know, seven to 10 hours a week. Uh, wow. Outside of Saturday and kingdom of Kodiak talking to people trying to figure something out with my team, uh, setting up, you know, whatever we could do, checking to see when or where we could be available to be open on top of all the monarch duties. It was and it, not ever any point that I think I was going to stop doing it. It was just saying mm-hmm. like, what's, what's difficult about it. Uh, when you can't let people play the game they want to play and you're the guy that told them they can't play it. Yeah. That's hard. <laughs> yeah, I get that. That would be a, a very hard place to be in, I think. So what, what was your favorite part? What was the best part about being king? Uh, so the monarch previous to me was Balder and I was able to make them a master. I was able to make Bal- uh, Balder a master crown. Um, I got the Kapora. Like I said, the, like, that was a big thing. The Kapora was done when still had stepped into office. They voted for it and it passed and we instituted it and it's, it's live. Uh, that was something that I, that I was really proud of. Um, during shutdown, because there's always players that are concerned about being under awarded. Mm. And we went into shutdown and I went to my team and my team agreed with it. We're going to find a way to get everyone to where they think they should be within reason. So we know we can't give out orders of the warrior because we're not fighting. But what about all these bardics? What about these classes Mm -hmm. they're teaching? What about the services they're doing or had done that they haven't been documented? So we, we spent a lot of time diving into the orc and we spent a lot of time going. I watched... Dragonspine, I don't know if you know this or not. I went back to every single video that's ever been posted to the Kingdom page and watched it through and checked every award that was announced at those events and cross-referenced them to the Orc. Mm. Because if they were wrong in the in the direction of the player needing more, that player got awarded. Um, and coming out of it, giving the giving it over to still hat she made five masters and now tajima's in office and he has an opportunity to make five new knights he's got a bunch of people that he could master now to replace those uh new masters and uh dragon spine's really low on knights so mm. i take a lot of pride in like oh yeah we got the words caught up so that they could do these things and uh watching my friends because still had Tajima are still friends and like very close to me. Um, being able to excel from the groundwork that I was able to say I put into is it, it, I'm really proud of that. That's awesome. The, I think for me, I would second the most fun part was giving the awards. Mm-hmm. Like, and for me, the hardest part was not giving the awards. <laughs> You know, and I feel like sometimes people think in Kingdom Office, it's like, oh, this person is running specifically to not give me an award. And 
I, can, I don't want to say no in all cases. For me, the most difficult part was telling someone no. Yeah. Like the fact saying, hey, I don't think that your work is here. Let me tell you what you could do to get it there was a conversation I had to have a few times as regent. And it was a, it was a difficult one. It was not, yeah. not a fun one. No, but absolutely. handing out those awards is pretty sick. It's pretty yeah. fun. So it, yeah. it balances. So yeah, the, uh, again, the hard part for handing out the awards was I didn't get to do it in person mm-hmm. because um, if we were meeting in person, there would have been an, an there would have been a nighting, but our, our candidates, at that point, we're like, I don't want to do a COVID mm. nighting. Like, can I wait until in person? And I'm obviously going to honor their wishes in that. But, um, you know, I didn't get to do a nighting, which was disappointing. But mm-hmm. um, I'm going to get to watch a whole bunch of nightings the next yeah. couple of years. Yeah. And I get to be really proud of of getting that set in place. So That's I'm really awesome. happy about that. Yeah. We've got a, another question from Dusty here. Kodiak, would you ever consider running for the AIBOD? Um, man, <laughs> <sighs> that's, I mean, ew. I'm already relatively unliked nationally. I think, I, I don't know. I, no one ever tells me if they like me or uh, don't like me. I just assume people hate me I, uh, I, nationally. I like you, Cody. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, Godric. Um, maybe uh i'm in my first year of teaching right now and i'm still going through like certifications and stuff Mm -hmm. for extra time um i i would say if i got another two reigns of kingdom monarch in under me uh i could probably not do kingdom office for a minute and do some aibod work uh they do a lot of great things they do put a lot of effort in Mm -hmm. um but uh, not not at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Completely fair. Talk about those spoons. Yeah. So if you have a player who is sitting and they're they're trying to work on their fir- like first few orders of the crown, right? That one, two, three. What advice would you have for them? Okay. Uh, are they young enough to be an heir apparent, or are they? I have. I am not familiar with heir apparent. Okay. So uh, if they're younger than 18 years old in Dragon's Spine, they can take a position called heir apparent okay. where they essentially study how to be an officer under the monarch. Oh, cool. It's a, it's an office position, but uh, it's a minor that's, that's holding the position. And what we've seen out of that is those who hold it eventually end up in kingdom office and they know, yeah, they know some of the steps. Uh, if the player's over 18 and they're just starting into it, uh, I would want to tell them the same things I was told, which is start local and, you know, are you in, are you invested in battle games? Do you like to cook? Um, do you like the idea of counting money and doing credits? Um, are you a big rules freak or are, you know, <laughs> do you have a really cool rain idea that you need for people that can do all those other things for you? I would like to say that, but if someone's gun ho and ready to go and they know how to do it. So like that's stage two, stage one mm-hmm. is air parent underage, do that, learn the office. I guess it's not a amp guard thing, but if you're in dragon spine, do that. If, um, if you have knowledge of any of the local positions and you would benefit from learning about the culture of leadership in AmpGuard, do local office first. But if you know how to lead and you've, you can handle the scrutiny, Mm. shoot for the stars. I mean, uh, Going and being, especially in Dragon's Fine, because again, the position of Kingdom Champion is kind of undefined. Going in as Kingdom Champion to be someone who's in the Monarch chat to have conversations with leadership and have your role defined to you weekly, essentially, is almost like having an heir apparent without mm-hmm. having one, right? Um, Kingdom GMR. Do you like running tournaments? Do you know how to do those? I've been I've been making coits tournaments since I was seven. So mm-hmm. like if I'm the Kingdom GMR, I'm setting up brackets and I'm telling people where to go and they're well senior damn carters to me. I'm not taking their gruff. I'm like, no, this is where you're going. This is the end of the conversation. Let's have the tournament. You know, I, I would never be Kingdom Regent. Because if you've seen my sewing, um, 
well, I did beat Dayman Obali in a, a kingdom qual, but that's a story for a different time. Maybe, maybe in a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> but like, I, I made the last feast for us for the kingdom at Maze Maze, and it was cold uh, because my cockpot turned off. Um, so, like knowing knowing what you're good at, knowing what you're not mm-hmm. good at, uh, knowing where and when you can take the flak, and if you're if you're under 18 in Dragon Spine, there's a position that apparently is not amp guard wide that you I've can never, jump. I've into. never even heard of it before. Yeah. So we've had some really like um, Balder, who is my predecessor to the Monarch's throne in his younger years, was an heir apparent. Cool. And you cool. get to learn how to do office. And, and typically in those fashions, you're, you're learning how to do office from people who know how to do office. Mm-hmm. Like you, you take an heir apparent on when you have like a master crown, good crown knight. Or, you know, the, our kingdom is blessed to have Sir Randall here, who's just a robot of knowledge. And it's <laughs> like, yes, come under my wing and I will I will show you Amp Guard. Um, so know your levels. Mm. Uh, know what you don't know, because then you're again, you're going to have to f- have someone that can give you that information. Mm. Um and then don't don't buy into the hype. If um if people are like, oh, it's it's you don't know, it's too hard, it counts in travel. You're like, oh well, I travel and I already know how to do battle games because I, I played a different game or I've I've played at the park long enough to know that mm. how to how to set these up or the book is readily available and I'm not scared to ask questions. Like there's no reason not to. Yeah. But anyone can do it. How do you go about getting the the social credit to be able to run for a kingdom office, especially as a new player, because I feel like that's one of the questions that I I get asked a decent, a decent amount. It's like, Ooh, can I win an election like mm-hmm. that? And I know in some kingdoms elections aren't that contested. And if you volunteer, you get it. But then in other kingdoms, there are three people running for that position. And it's, you gotta, you gotta actually go out and convince people to get your vote. So how do you get the social credit to run for these positions if you don't have it already? Uh, so uh, most of the questions to Hail and, and awards, you need to travel. Um, I mm. lost to Balder. When Balder beat me, or when Balder took office, he beat me for the seat. Mm. So you had to have perseverance to come back. Um, my platform against Balder was if you knight me, I, or I'm sorry, if you make me monarch, <laughs> I will knight Balder. Like he was already going to be there uh, for his awards. He would have been a master crown in my first reign and a, a knight in my second one. And some of his park was biting on it. They're like, really? You would do that? And I'm like, well, he's going to meet the standard by the time I'm done. Yeah, so yeah. yes. Um, but yeah, perseverance of getting beat. Um, I also uh, lost to him. He needed a GMR because no one ran. I said, I will be your GMR if I lose. And I did. I stayed really active for the kingdom. Mm-hmm. I travel a bunch. I talked to a whole bunch of people. Uh, the first one, I was scared that I was going to lose uh, because of no confidence. I just thought mm-hmm. no one thought I was going to do all right. And then the second one, I was confident that no one was going to challenge it because it'd be like no one would want to do the work of sitting in COVID and being the monarch. So, um, yep, <laughs> it was a, I guess a, the second one was kind of like a saving grace for getting mm-hmm. a year term, but uh, persevere. If you, if you do get beat, doesn't mean you can't run again. Um, look for offices if you do get beat that you can fall into. Um, and I say this to my knights and the players who get concerned about being belted to knights all the time. I don't need to be an belted to do the work. I don't need to be in kingdom office to do the work either. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a passion job that you wanted to do and your monarchy is okay with it, just do it. And it, maybe that'll get you enough social credit to where yep. people are like, oh yeah, he did this project. Yep. Like this is the guy we want in our office, you know? 90% of the things that you want to do do not need the approval of your kingdom for you to be able to do. Yeah. And and obviously there are exceptions to that. But if you if you want to do content for your kingdom, do it. 
If you want to run specific games, talk to the people. Most of the time, if you say, hey, I really want to do this and you come with a plan, your kingdom's going to let you do it nine times out of 10. They really don't care. And it's a week that they don't have to do something. And in taking taking the things that you're passionate about and running with them, that that's good advice right there. Yeah, absolutely. And never don't don't give up. If, if you're passionate mm-hmm. about it, you're going to have everyone has naysayers. There are going to be people that are saying you're not doing a good job. You're not doing it right. You're not doing it fast enough. If you're doing it, you're you're above 90 percent of the people because there's a chunk of them that have never even considered stepping Mm -hmm. up or have tried to step up and then back down. So if you go, if you do something and go through with it and you finish it, you've you've superseded a, a large majority of the people that are are giving you flack. Well, and if you try it and fail and then get back up and do it again, you have done more than most of the people who will give you flack. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about the failure part. If you ask, you go to any night, ask them, Hey, how many times did you fail in your craft (laughs) before you got your masterhood? And they will all tell you dozens and dozens and dozens of times. (laughs) Absolutely. It's we get lost because we, we fall in love with what Amcard is. We get lost in the idea. This is a volunteer establishment. The, the leadership's not getting paid. You know, we have trouble paying people for like garb. <laughs> you know, we, we're like, oh, can you give us a free piece so that we can give it to the popular? No, we need to pay them. That's what should be happening. We struggle with that. So people doing things out of passion and they're like, wait, we don't have to pay you to... Mm to do this thing that eventually will be needed, you know, like never let your passion die. There's Mm. you're the one that kills it. Not anyone else. Tweet that right there. Headline (laughs) of the show. (laughs) So you you mentioned something a little bit earlier and I want to, I want to circle back to uh, about the belt line stuff you mentioned on when I came onto your show that you are not belted to anybody, correct? Nope. Nope. So that is something that is, I don't want to say unique but is 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 fairly rare uh most people when they get up especially where you're at with grand duke and the the titles and running for office there's almost always a belt around their waist that signifies some sort of relationship whether it's white red yellow whatever it is so explain uh, explain to me a little bit why aren't you in a belt line and does some of the the reasoning and thought process that goes behind that because i love it by the way, I love the people that don't have knights that become knighted because I, I hate the things like I have to be a squire first. No, you don't. So uh, go for it. Use the platform. Okay. All right. <laughs> so um, me not being belted to anyone doesn't go without people asking. Mm-hmm. Um, very early on in my career, Sir Nikolai from the Burning Lands did offer me a belt when he was still a squire. He's like, hey, like I see potential out of you. Let me know. And I went home. And I didn't know what to do with it because I'm a 34 year old. And I'm like, I don't, I was in the military. I don't want to be someone's subordinate again. I Mm. want, and then I, um, I watched Azrael Jade's video with Baihu because before KOK existed, um, nightly chats with Sir Baihu and drinking with Randall were King, were, were Dragon Spine's, alternative videos i i got permission from both of them to to start but i watched azrael jay's video she wasn't knighted or she wasn't belted to anyone she's a three belted knight she's been the monarch of dragon's fine eight times um she is one of the coolest people in the world to hang out mm-hmm. with but she's also a pit bull like if if she says that she's going to do something and you were like, oh, no. And she was like, not only did I do it, but I, I wrote in on my thing that you said I wasn't going to. <laughs> I want my apology. Um, no, she's just a, she's a, a pit bull and uh, very fiery. So like I, I sat on that. And the next time I went over to Sir Nikolai's house, I was like, I appreciate it. I can't uh, because I think I can do it on my own. Mm. And uh, I don't know if Nikolai remembers saying it, but I remember saying it. He's like, damn, that makes me want you more. Um, And then, I mean, Sir Baihu's asked me three different times. And the third time, the knights 
that were at the event had to remind him that I had already said no. Um, I, I love him to death and he has a great idea about building a great web of, of people. Um, but again, I, if I can't at this point, if I can't do it on my own or at that point, if I couldn't have done it on my own, I was probably not doing enough. And now I'm at a point where, you know, I'm, I'm trying to talk to monarchs about making sure that the right decisions are made. We have a bunch of great candidates for knighthood and I don't need it. Like mm. if you give it to me, great. That's awesome. That's super cool. I'll, I, I will be honored to be a knight in, in Dragon's Fine and be a member of that community in Amcard. But um, I, I do me. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, whether I got a white belt or a red belt or a black belt or no belt or whatever, mm. because... I'm not break. I, I don't do anything that breaks the rules and it, it gets a lot of people engaged and fun. So, um, yeah, I've, I've turned down four belts, the joke in, um, in, in my local park from Sir Francis is, uh, when it happens, if it happens that they're just going to make all the heraldry of all the Knights of Dragonspine <laughs> on my belt. And because I'm everyone's squire. Cause again, I, I, you, the perception of knighthood gets you to the point where people think that they should be scared to approach them when it, we want the opposite. And to me, it's like, you're my friend first. Mm -hmm. Like if you're ever going to throw in my face that you're a knight, when we're just talking and being friends, first I'll laugh at you. And then I'll ask the question I was going to ask because like, that's not what that that is. You're a full-time yep. officer in the game of Amp Guard and you have a, a a persona you're supposed to live up to. That doesn't mean that like I'm gonna just bow, I, I'm not gonna kowtow to your yep. your statement, you know? It, it's it's just it's I don't know. I feel uh, like old in older Amp Guard, there was this idea of skill transfer that came from knight to squire. Sure. And I think that that just isn't the case anymore. Uh, I think in sword in particular, there was, you know, that dojo mentality of this is me and my crew, your and your crew, we're not sharing info type of thing. But with the advent of Sword Knight Bootcamp, with YouTube, with all of these things, I don't think that the, 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 it's not needed anymore to sit down with a master dragon and then show you your craft. And then you spend 30 hours with them perfecting that craft. And then you go do your own craft and then you get elevated on your own. That's just not really the thing. At least I don't see that as being the thing anymore. And so I think the, the belt lines really what they are. It's more of a formalization of how about this? My goal as a knight, sorry, I know, I know. What, what do you always say? This is not about me. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my, my 60 seconds of me and then I'll throw you more questions. But the for me, as a knight, I am not saying that I'm going to spend more time with my squires teaching them. I should be teaching pretty much everybody. If a new player comes to me with a question, if I me wearing the white belt, I should dedicate the amount, the however amount of time that they need or help them get the resources that they need to be able to do what they want to do. Okay. My squires are me formalizing saying your goals are now things I need to help you achieve, or I want to help you achieve, sure. which isn't always necessarily a case with random Joe blow at the park. Like mm -hmm. I'm here to help Joe blow have fun. But if Joe Blow's goal is his seventh dragon in the next six months, I'm not going to sit down with him like I do my squires and come up with a plan and sit sure. down and do like formalize it. Uh, I like, I like that the game has moved away from skill transfer from knight to, to squire. Sure. Like my knight was a, a flame knight has nothing to do with my craft, but he was able to teach me so many other things and help me formulate the plans that I wanted to do to achieve the goals that I wanted. Yeah. And there's, there's a couple of the cool things you get out of being in a belt line, like the Indulsa belt line, which is, has a lot of members here. There's a, uh, Sir Francis just put up a really cool photo on his timeline of like 15 players getting in a picture <laughs> because they all of the different branches off this Indulsa belt mm -hmm. line. So, you know, you get, you get a built in family if you want it that way, you know? And then the other thing is you get, you can take on a name. You, I mean, it, you don't have to, obviously, yeah. but like you get a name that, you know, carries weight to it. Gravidas, uh, uh, Gravidas, Gravid, yes. Something Class. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where like, if you go to an event and you address, Oh, how you doing? My name is, uh, you know, 
a Joe Andalsa or, you know, uh, uh, Fred yep. Hammer of God, yep. <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, oh, well, if they picked you, you must be something special. Let's mm-hmm. let's engage you more. So th- there's those built in social contracts we have with people. But it also puts you under a microscope, too, though. Yeah, you get examined all the time. Well, and especially with like Michael's crew, you know, it's <laughs> like five generations deep. If you do something wrong, Michael's going to get a message. And Michael may have only met you once. But man, yeah. like you, you got a name to live up to there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's. It, as much as like I, I figured I could do it on my own, I would never want to disappoint someone like that. Mm-hmm. Like I'm already really bad of being my own worst critic. And my friends, like when I made New Year's resolution not to insult myself, mm-hmm. my friends were like, oh, <laughs> that's a big step. Um, I would hate to have someone else that I would be like, oh, are they mad or are they upset? Or are they, mm-hmm. uh, do they feel bad about me? So I just treat, all players is people like to learn something from new, old, whatever. And um, maybe someday I'll have beltlings or something, but again, maybe not. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, people that uh, maybe I get knighted and people are like, eh, okay, cool. Well, I was, that was going to be my next question is, do you have anyone belted under you? Uh, maybe under a Lord, t- Lord title or something like that. Uh, no. Um, so, <sighs> Saran, I, I keep referencing Sarando, but he has a lot of great ideas that I would have, yes. I would have loved to have been the first one to use. So he would have had to have used my idea, but um, he put out applications, and there's not a person, jo- not outside of a joke, that I would have been like, oh yeah, I'll belt you. If if someone thinks that I'm the guy, like they should, I would assume they would approach me because I don't think I'm the guy, like if you take the master candidates in dragon spine and I say, all right, give them all knighthoods, make a couple more masters and give them knighthoods. And then if you want to consider me, you know, um, because that's not, mm. you know, like I, I'm a doubter. I, I don't, I don't I get the, that. I don't believe the hype. Um, I, I, I did almost think that I was going to be the fastest knight in dragon spine. Uh, but then the, like my ego and my hatred for self self hatred, like fought for a while. And I was like, Ooh, I could be, I could be the, one of the faster nights in dragon. Mm-hmm. No, nope. Nope. Not going to do that. I'm trying to think of the quickest night that I've seen. It's probably like, I think I saw a professional seamstress come in and get masterhood in like 18 months and then was knighted at like year three or four. But that's, that's the only one I, most, most of them are five to six, seven years. Yeah. So we were, I mean, we're, I'm sure that there are quicker ones in dragon spine in the, the early years, mm. but the, the quickest one that I had seen was survive who was like four years and like three months. And my four year was two days ago. So, uh, cool. Yeah. Mm. We call it a, we jokingly call that relevant history. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not, not modern history, re- relevant right. history. <laughs> so the uh, no belt beltlings currently, have you put any thought into how you will run your belt line eventually? Or is so, that something that's just not even really on your, <laughs> on your radar at this point? Uh, so yeah, I make a lot of like, uh, grandiose statements about what has to happen first, right? Like my, if, if Dragon Spine, Amp Guard as a whole, however you want to look at it, decides that I'm ever going to be a knight, I'm going to put a personal thing out to the Amp Guard page and go, hey, Kodiak needs a last name now. And uh, without Amp Guard, I wouldn't be here. So Amp Guard mm. is the one that's going to make the decision, make a poll and take the last name. That's cool. Um, and then, so if there was a belt line down the road, it would be like, well, I'd want you to take my last name so that that is there for you. Um, does the idea of like what level award you're at for structure we mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, at K- on KOK, uh, I really like that. Um, I really like them having names that are not Squire Page and, uh, man or woman at arms, like, um, 
you think about like old World of Warcraft guilds where like the naming structures were like level of angel and it's like I okay it. well let, I love it yeah I'm gonna get instead of calling them a squire be like you're this or you're that um and <laughs> I don't know like uh, if a player was like hell bent to be Kodiak's whatever like I want to know why because again I'm I'm a Southwest player. I, I have a little bit of conversation with people in California. I have a little bit of connections to people in Florida, Tennessee, that area. And I have a very, very little in um, Western New York uh, from my college park because I visited once and played there once, but they were <laughs> great. They treated me well. Uh, Canada knows me a little bit, but um, I, I don't think I'm like popular enough to it would be like, Oh man, I really want to be your, your belting. Okay. Um, did Deverick put you up to this? Is he bribing <laughs> you? Cause he, Deverick would do something like that. He'd be like, Oh, here's 20 bucks. Go tell Kodiak you want to be his belt line. <laughs> you would be surprised. Uh, yeah. There are, there's a certain mindset. I think that players get into when they hit their first plateau and whether that's at five, six, seven, most players will hit a plateau and they their instant go-to is I need a red belt. And before I got knighted, I would walk around with with my knight and I call it my knights. I have two guys who are really influential yeah. with me. And so I'd be walking around with with one of them and they get every event, like two people would come up and like softly start pushing the conversation towards, well, Hey, if I ever wanted to be a red belt, you're the knight I'd want to be, you know, and they're trying to like <laughs> dance around it without actually asking. Sure. And it happened so much. <laughs> and it was just people who you wouldn't, who weren't, you know, weren't close friends. They weren't fighting company. They weren't hanging out with us. They were, Hey, I'm at seven and I don't know what to do. I think the next step that I need is to become a squire. Hmm. And like, for me, at least, that's not what I want. I don't want, granted, I will help you, but I can help you set some goals without you being tied to my last name, last name. You know what I mean? And I think that you will get, you'll be surprised at how many of those tap dancing right or a, hey, okay. but hey, well, I, th I think you'll get some of those. <laughs> well, if, if the day comes and there's some tap dance and I might dance too, but um, I, I do take a, a pride in that too. Um, when my household started, there were six of us and I spent a lot of energy talking to them about like, do you want to be in a belt line? Who do you want to be belted to? And for some of them was the person that started the conversation for them to join a belt line or to talk to about if that belt line would make sense. So again, already doing that without, you know, it's like, yeah, we, you want to be in a belt? Cool. Like what's your path? Do you want it to be your path? Are you just looking like, do you really like the last name iron hand and you really want to take it? Like, okay. Valid well, reason, you're, valid you're, reason. <laughs> yeah. You're going to talk to Mr. Saint. Do you want to be an of God or a, uh, who you know now or whatever uh, um, Rada and Pumpkin Jack are doing down there in Florida. Is that a boohoo god? Is that, yeah, a, is that the yeah, one? Uh, who you know, uh, you know who god? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and again, uh, Rada is an Order of the Ash member. Like, I, I, I'm super happy for her. That last name is bonkers. Pumpkin Jack is one of the greatest people I've ever met. Uh, you're going to ask a question later. His name's going to come up again. So, um, yeah, but spoiler, spoiler, yeah, spoilers, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> so we've got, we'll, we'll devote probably next 15 minutes to, to this question. Cause I know it's a big one for you and you've, okay. you've said it a couple of times. Okay. You have said you have, you love to talk about knighthood mm -hmm. and that you, okay. First up, why do you love to talk about knighthood? And then we'll, we'll do that one. And then I'll get to other ones. Why, okay. why do you love the concept or talking about the, the idea of knighthood so much? Why is that such a passion? So in a game, so uh, let me start with why I think it's interesting that whenever you ask someone who their favorite fictional knight is, they never bring up an amp garter. Amp guard's true, a game. True. Yeah, so true, like there's true. a structure where you can have these people who have these great awards and whatnot and knowing like being aware of the history of stuff like that is I have a passion for knowing about 
what I'm participating in. Uh, we were off camera. We were talking about playing Skyrim a whole bunch. Mm. I watched Skyrim videos about the lore just so I know like, oh, I'm picking this up. This is what this means when I do that. Mm. Like, this is what how important it is. So there's a historical reference to it. There's um, a, a general like human nature of trying to understand why it's so important to people. Uh, I came into a park where the people that I would consider some of my closest friends were all knights. And it was like, well, I should probably learn a little bit about this. Um, but it's, I, I like studying people and I like seeing, I like seeing strong groups too. So when you talk about, um, it's not a, it's not a belt line, but like it, down here, the wheel is a fighting company. Mm -hmm. And those are, like they're lifelong friends. They'll they're best mans at each other's weddings. They, you know, they'll do whatever they can to make everyone in their, their company happy. And I feel like knighthood personifies that in a different way where it's like, or at least this is what it feels like it should be. Mm -hmm. Like I've brought you under my belt. I will take care of you as much as I can. Please don't make me look like a fool and I will, try to make you the best person I can. And that exchange happens. Um, but why do I like to talk about it so much? Because I believe there are people that should be knighted. I believe pe there are mm. people that shouldn't have been knighted or should not be knighted anymore. Uh, I think there's other belts that could exist. I, um, I, I like fight. I, I really fought on the side of Sir Tristan when Paladin and anti-Paladin came up for vote. I sat on the COM meeting and said, no, I, I don't want those open because it, it's something for the Knights to have. They have a full-time office now and the benefits they get are that day's worth of gifts. So if, if you're a 24 year old who just got a day's worth of gifts and you never stop playing amp card, mm -hmm. you could spend 30, 40, 50 years being in permanent office with that one time benefit. Like, sure, it's really awesome. It's really meaningful. And it, it, it's a great night for that person. But I wanted there to be something there still. Mm. So like giving Paladin and Anti-Paladin to the populace, but keeping the Phoenix, I was like, I'm fine with that. Let them have something, you know? Um, also, getting to talk about Nighthood gets to talk about awards, gets to talk about people that you get to praise. And you get to talk about people that like... You didn't know who you may not know much about me, but do you know who Kenjin is in Mountains of Ellsrum and in, in the mm -hmm. southwest of Arizona? He's a master owl that has just he's redefined cosmetic art of sword. Mm -hmm. And Dragonspine as a whole didn't know who this guy was until Kodiak and still had dragged <laughs> him into the spotlight. It was like, no, this man knows what he's doing. And now he's a master owl. He's probably going to be one of the next knights. So getting to talk about knighthood gets you to talk about who all these people who deserve awards, the importance of it, what it, where it needs to be, how it needs to be, mm. what you can do to improve the game through having knighthood, what you should remove from that realm of knighthood how conversations about who the next night is the circle of nights is another topic. I like, like, because that's political conversation, right? Like if you've, if you're from a part of the kingdom that's never been spoken or doesn't get a whole lot of in face, face to face, how do you get a yes on a night circle? You know, if the knights don't participate, how do they know how to vote? And then, you know, so well, and then you get every night has a different checklist on how they yes vote. And it's always this nebulous. I'm, I'm working on a video. I'm going to actually throw my checklist. Like what, what am I looking for when I yes vote here are I, so far I'm at eight. And if like, if you're not checking six of those eight, I'm no voting. you. And you know that from the beginning, like it's, it's, it's nebulous, but you ask every night, it's like, oh, I had a bad experience with that guy five years ago. I'm going to no yep. vote him. Yep. But you don't know, like, it blows my mind that we don't have a more defined way to to do this thing that is such a pillar of our game. Mm -hmm. And it comes, and I guess we get the checks and balances with monarchs and everything else. But like, the COK in most kingdoms does hold a lot of sway. And if they, you get some knights who are yes and no voting. 
for unknown reasons and they don't and there's no check on it the the populace can't like i can't officially go as a populist member and go hey why did you no vote this person that knight doesn't have to explain themselves right. that's crazy to me yeah <laughs> i mean so again we we talked about this on kok uh dragon spine circle of knights is closed mm. uh i think so I, my argument is that it, it should be as long as they're offering out their explanations of yeses and nos right um letting the candidate know if you voted no hey this is why i voted no it's not a permanent no it's not a it's not even a like full-time no it's if these boxes are checked like you just said Mm -hmm. i can vote yes but to me i don't see these boxes as being checked um dragon spine again uh (laughs) i'm gonna keep referencing this show called kingdom of kodiak Um, i wonder why wonder why (laughs) we have a lot of knights in our kingdom who are partners with another knight. Mm. So one of the things that they're, they've had to work through is like, we're not going to vote for our partner. We're not going to bring our partner to the, the table to even be discussed about knighthood. So you have delays in people who are because of their relationships inside of the knighthood. And that's an interesting conversation to have. Mm-hmm. Cause again, it's another social structure. Like, wow. I, I my growth into the the echelon of Ampgard to to be a full time officer in this game and and represent it daily is being held up because I'm dating someone or yeah. married to someone. Uh, marriage has been the more mm-hmm. obvious one, but it, all of those things together, and it just comes back to like you think about all of that and go out. And it's still just Saturday and it's 12 o'clock and you're about to swing the sword for the first time. You can have all of that conversation anytime, always, everywhere. And I have. Damon Obli drove back from uh, Phoenix, Arizona with me, six hour road trip. I didn't stop talking the entire time. (laughs) And I apologize to her immensely for it, but... Um, it I is what opinions. it is. I yeah, have yeah. opinions, you know. So give give me the spiciest knighthood take that you have. The spiciest night. Uh, I think we should be stripping belts from bad knights. I, I mean, that's. It may not be that spicy because it's. Well, define define bad night for me. I think that might uh, be because I feel like yeah, everyone agrees. Almost everybody agrees we should strip belts from bad nights. But I think where the spice can come in is how do we define bad night? So if a player gets suspended permanently or even a three month. So a permanent suspension, they should lose their belts. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be able to go to a different game or in a different environment. still hold a knighthood. Um, If, if they're getting a three or six month suspension, but it is directly in the face of what their belt is representing. So if you have an argument with someone and a monarchy member hears that and goes, Hey, you need to take a time out. That's not a, I don't think that's it. But if you're going out on the field with a known illegal weapon mm. and beating people with a known illegal weapon and you're caught and you're suspended for that, your belt should be in question. You know, if you're, if you're doing any of the, the, um, the COCs that would, if you were caught, you were likely to be suspended, but it was just, not you weren't quite caught you weren't quite <laughs> caught you know um it's you know i don't i don't necessarily agree that knights should have to have a check every five years i do it's it's, it's an interesting concept mm. i so i could give it some merit but if you're also if you're if you're done if you're act you're like i'm not coming back i will not be coming back at all giving your belt back to the game to show your appreciation for that and then like, oh, I'm coming back. Okay. Are you coming back as this person or are you not coming back as this mm-hmm. person? You know, because if if we have an event or a vote or a knighting or so, a candidate coming up and we have a, a knight that has not been active for years or quit entirely that goes into these chats and wants to state their opinions – well, first off, you don't have the voting requirements to do this, but also how would you possibly know if this person's worthy or not? Especially if you say no, mm-hmm. if you say no, you're saying no, cause you're, you are legitimately trying to gatekeep. So 
Like I've seen knights in the past. I, I know a sword knight who would no vote any belt that wasn't sword because he thought sword was a like an essential part. If you don't have your sword belt first, all the other things fall apart in the game. Yeah. Like, and he just straight no voted everybody who didn't have sword. Yeah. Now, I, again, don't get me wrong. There are, are people who have to step away for periods of time, or are less uh, active as they once mm-hmm. were. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have to. The, they would give up their belts. But if if you are gone for a year and you're going to keep your belt, you shouldn't have an opinion in the night circle. You don't know what happened for the last year. If you've been go- if you've been gone for a decade, you should probably not even be in the night circles conversations. You should be getting yep. acclimated back to the the people that you're around before you're making any kind of because the game decisions. has changed. I yes, promise absolutely. you, the game has changed. Absolutely. <laughs> Imagine yeah. someone who left in 2004 Amcard and mm-hmm. then shows back up today. They are almost not recognizable. Like yeah. they, the culture of the game of what is allowed and what isn't allowed mm-hmm. that alone, let alone the actual game itself, just the culture that we have around of what is acceptable speech and what isn't in the last 20 years, like so different. Yeah. And, and the example that we have down here, and I don't, the gold crest name carries wide, but the gold standard, mm-hmm. like if you were playing when the gold standard was the way knights were made and Let's remember, not a lot of knights were made because the gold standard was you had to beat Goldcrest <laughs> or be better than Goldcrest, and no one is better than Goldcrest. Um, you go to a new circle and you're like, well, no, that's not what Goldcrest did. Well, that's great. Let's remember that Goldcrest retired. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's remember that Goldcrest stepped back. Let's let's remember these things. Also, holding someone to that kind of standard means that you promote no one. Mm. you know put them against themselves and see how they do against their their previous works you know sword is something where you can go okay you need to beat you need to win this it doesn't matter who's there because that's another stupid argument <laughs> like oh well it's not it's not uh it's not standard. It doesn't meet the standards of uh, competition. Sufficient competition. It's sufficient competition. I went to a kingdom event, not me, in this, for instance. If you go to a kingdom event and win a kingdom event, the rules say you've won uh, an award. An award is coming to you. I don't care if the best fighter there was a level one who is fighting opposite handed and is blindfolded. You won the kingdom event. That's the end of the conversation. You're the bar. You're the bar. Yeah. Right. And it's uh, it's just getting that evolution of the game for uh, having a knight that doesn't know mm. that. So they vote would vote differently. Again, maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe it hasn't happened in my experience. Mm-hmm. I just, if you're disconnecting yourself, maybe step away from, if you're going to disconnect, give the belt. Yeah. You know, um, if I ever retire, I like the idea of literally giving my belt to, cause I think one of the, I will never retire with active squires. Um, part of, part of my commitment to them and their commitment to me, and this is, it goes both ways. I will do everything I can to help you achieve the goals that you want. If you no longer wish to pursue those goals, that's fine, but we got to be on the same page with that. And so I won't leave you in the, in the wind. You don't leave me out in the wind sure. type of thing. Yeah. No, if I all would... my squires graduate or my last one graduates, the idea of I'm taking my belt off, I am passing it on to this family member. This is the last one. I'm done. Yeah. I'm out. Here it is. <laughs> if, if I had no beltlings and I was done with amp card, but I had a white belt, I would go to whatever the next event was for my kingdom and I would ask if I could, if I could do this. And I understand that there would be players who'd be like, no, that's dumb. That's your belt. You've earned it. It was a belt I earned in a game of Vampire that I'm not going to be playing anymore. Yep. Like if, if, if you really feel that way, if I ever stumbled back in, you could talk to me about putting it on, but to have the trust in yourself that like, yeah, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I've, but the, the the white belt was never yours to begin with. The white belt was amp guards. It was your kingdoms. Someone else gave you it. It was never yours. Mm. 
giving it back is the right thing to do. My opinion. That might be my spicy take. I don't know. I like that because, and for me, if, if you ever come back to the game, we were talking about this on Kingdom of Kodiak. Everyone go watch Kingdom of Kodiak. <laughs> um, for me, the masterhood is mine. Mm-hmm. If I ever come back to the game, I am still a master, mm-hmm. right? My, my skills may not be what they were, right? But I, at, at one point in this game, was the best at what I do. And that masterhood is never going away. Yeah. But the the office that I agreed to step into when I put the white belt on, I am no longer, if I have been gone for five years, I am no longer able to serve in that office. Mm-hmm. I just, I can't, I don't know the game. I don't know the people. I don't, I'm not willing to put the, whatever it is. And so come back and rest on your laurels of your masterhood. That's sick. Like, yeah. I, you know, your, your masterhood still awesome. I mean, if, if you approach it, the, like if you, if you're not big footing, when you come back, you're, you, you're like, oh, hey, like I played a couple, I played five years ago. I was a knight. Um, I'd like mm-hmm. to sit in on the talks. I won't vote. I want to get to know these people. Okay, cool. There's a different mm-hmm. conversation to be had there. But if you come back after five years and you're telling us who to knight because that's what you should do mm-hmm. or whatever, like, and that's, again, that's never happened to me. But the idea of like, don't let your ego get in the way. It's a game. And people hate when you say that. Yeah. Yeah. You say it's just a game and people go, it's not just a game. It's a hobby. It's, my, it's a it's sport. My life. Yeah. It's my life. And I'm like, I girl, same. I believe you. I do amp guard as much as I can. I spend time while I'm sitting in between my classes, thinking about what my next journal entry for where I want to put my story is going. I get you on that, but that doesn't change what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, we can put all of our love and in, into it. If you do that, D and D, D and D is still a game. Yeah. If you put a thousand hours into Skyrim, Skyrim is still a game. Guess what? Amp Guard is still a game. Now we can all love it. That doesn't change. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I agree. 100%. I agree. And I think one of the things that's a little bit more, maybe more frequent then uh, like the, the knights quitting and coming back is knights moving. So I, I moved kingdoms and I am on this knights circle and have the ability to vote yes or no on these people that I literally don't know at all. Mm-hmm. And so I have, I have told, you know, the members that I've talked to in the, my new knight circle, I'm like, I have my checklist. And if I don't know if these people check these things, I'm abstaining. I'm just not going to vote because yep, I'm, I'm new. I don't know. And it's the same mindset. I don't know what I don't know. Right. And I have no clue if this person checks these boxes or not. So it is irresponsible of me to come in and and wield that power and go, well, I can vote. So I'm going to vote. No, I don't know. him, Or yes, or whatever. What beauty do you get out of that too, though? Like, Oh, I don't know this person. They're already a candidate for knighthood in your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Guess who I have to get to go. No. Because now I have a checklist that I want to make sure that I can bring my best effort into. So now I'm going to go talk to this person. When that person's around, I'm going to ask them questions. I'm going to experience them. But yeah, off the bat, just being like, eh, well, mm-hmm. like yes or no. Eh, I've been here for a week. <laughs> well, and too, it depends. So like I'm going from the Kingdom of the Rising Winds, which is one of, if not the largest kingdom in the game. And we would have 20, 25 nights at our events to now I'm going to winter's edge where I think there's 12 total nights and let alone how many of them are all going to show up at the same time at an event. And so me coming in and no voting somebody or yes, voting even has a whole lot more weight to it because there's just so few, I think it's irresponsible just to come in and drop that belt and be like, boom, I don't know anybody, but yes or no. And we, I mean, we tell our, we tell our uh, monarch candidates the same thing though, right? Like, Mm -hmm. Hey, um, you're going to get about 35, 40 votes total for this, for, for your vote. Um, If you talk to the big parks, you will win yep. because all of the, you need, you know, all of the little parks to get the two big parks, right. Or what, or what have you, or, mm-hmm. Hey, if you get all the little parks and one of the big parks, the other big park, it, it, they could all vote against you and you'll still win. You tell your monarchs that all the time. You're, you're looking, we're, we're so good at, at looking at elections and, and being diplomatic 
except for when it means that we have to self check and be like, Oh yeah, Mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't be doing anything right now. You know, it's, (sighs) (laughs) I love, I love your spicy take. I love, I love it. It's a good one. So we, we are at an hour and 38 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to get some milk out to, to calm that spicy take (laughs) as it were to get to my favorite question of the whole night. I love these questions, different people's answers for this. You are now building a Mount Rushmore for your masterhood Mm -hmm. for, for crown who is on your Mount Rushmore and why. Okay. Uh, Goldcrest and Cash Pumpkin Jack, uh, Azrael Jade, and Tr- Sir Tristan. So give give me some whys in there. Okay, uh, and Cash got a Canadian kingdom up and going through all of her medical issues. Uh, she is dived like head first into her persona. She's well versed in uh the crafting the leadership the service um also she is from new york so she has a bias in uh my eyes because we can agree to meet in rochester and have a garbage plate together (laughs) i love it uh pumpkin jack is one of the sweetest most sincere people i've ever met he is we've met two times in person um but the second time we met we could not stay away from each other. Um, he is the knight to one of my house members. Uh, he is someone who I've never seen speak without honesty, but also mm. in the in the face of fear, being honest. Um, and he's just a well all around good person. So Pumpkin Jack, um, Goldcrest, even though he is retired and is still. Um, probably not going to come back. Spoilers. That's, I think everyone knows that at this point. We can hope, man. We can hope. Uh, he's still, he still put a lot of things in place. He's still the gold. He was still the golden standard for a period of time. And will be for a while. He's, yeah, he will be for a while. If, uh, the ALU videos, uh, the brain, his brainchild live on in perpetuity. Yeah, and they live on, and you should continue to rewatch them. Would Godric? Would you say you've watched some of them fifteen times? Yeah, yeah. Same here. Like we've this like same videos over and over again because I just want the info. I want it to live in my head. But also meeting Goldcrest, and he met us when Order of the Ash was a baby. Granted, it's four years in the game which isn't that long of a time, but we were relatively new and he walked up to me, shook my hand and said, Oh, you're Kodiak. You're in the order of the ash. That's cool. And I lost my mind. Deverick got pushed. I had to explain to him who he was because Deverick didn't know. Deverick's like, uh, I don't watch the LU videos. I'm not into the lore of amp. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, him having that personality plus prior service guy, I got to give him some credit. Um, Sir Tristan, uh, former Dragon Spine player. uh, He has a masterhood in what I believe should be an existing path to Sword Knight, which is Master Griffin. Uh, He is um, a well-spoken, intelligent, and caring person. He goes out of his way to be involved. Him and his wife did this um, just because they knew that that would mean the world to me that Mm -hmm. that happened. Um, He still comes, he's in El Paso and I'm in Las Cruces. So it's an hour away, but we have made each other's events every time uh, because he is a good storyteller. He is funny, but also uh, one of the biggest hearts I've ever met. Um, And then Azrael Jade is literally my inspiration for how I've decided to do the game. Um, Again, a pit bull, a lot of people would put Sir Randall on there, her her husband, but that's the thing is that's why Ezra Jade is so amazing is it's always been Sir Randall. Everyone looks at it, but she has done so many mm-hmm. things for Amp Guard as a whole, Dragon Spine, our park, building communities, making sure things are taken care of, and is the example that we still go to here for why we need 
to have a kingdom coffer because it was just coming out of their pockets because they loved the game, you know? So you, maybe not the everyone's greatest all time five people, but I'm all over the country, which is one thing you should always do when you're making a top five list is try to touch as much of the country as possible. Um, And I have personally been impacted by every single one Mm -hmm. of those five people. And if, when I meet Ann Cash in person, because I haven't got to do that yet, um, she gets the hug. Pumpkin Jack's already been in too many hugs. Tristan's (laughs) already been in too many hugs. Um, Azrael Jade, she lives two blocks from me. She gets... You know, I missed her retirement this weekend because I had a birthday party to go to. I'm sorry, but um, she she's still. Yeah, that's it. It's it may not be yours. It may not be anyone else's. But if you can argue why they shouldn't be someone's. Yeah, I love it. Good list, man. Good list. So as we close here. Are there any topics that are near and dear to your heart that you want to speak on, touch on here for a few minutes before we close that maybe I just didn't ask a question on? If not, no big deal. (laughs) Uh, I, I want to keep emphasizing Sir Smiley's uh, stance guys. We need to find a way to get a more RP. We more events where we can, we can pay homage to the people who are going out to park and know that they're going to lose every sword fight they're in, but they get to be that half dragon minotaur that they don't get to be anywhere else and give them that event. You know, um, we need to, um, we need to find a way to make that happen. Uh, the kingdom's, Oh my goodness. Like we need to also find a way to stop fighting about things. Like, I don't know. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, I know. (laughs) So like the example was battle night, right? Like battle night was contentious because it could have been in the sword path. It could have been its own. And there was a lot of arguments back and forth about where it was going to go, you know, and how it was going to get there. We were almost everyone agreed battle night should exist. But getting it off the floor, and then the Circle of Monarchs had to have, f- what, four conversations after GOTC to figure out which belt line it's going to fall in. Well, and, and then the fact that it took t- uh, over a decade of people bringing this up to even yeah. make Battlemaster a thing. Yeah. When, when a vast majority of your game agrees with something and it still takes that long to make it into the rule book, yeah. there's got to be better ways. Yeah. Um, this this doesn't isn't anything that's going to get me any clout or anything, but Iron Mountains specifically Iron Mountains. I'm not part of your populace. Lightning needs to be a knight. She has done way too much for our game at this point. And I understand there's a ladder, and I know that I'm talking in hyperboles here because maybe mm-hmm. there's just a, a a climb she hasn't made yet. But and she will at some point. Obviously, she's a great person. But with all the work that she's put into the data that goes into GOTC, the growth that she has made for Amp Guard and her individual growth mm. that she puts up in front of everyone to get dot, to see. Like if you follow Lightning at all, you can see she puts her heart in everything she does. And she's not part of my populace. I consider her a friend. I love seeing her. She's fantastic. But um she's she needs that like not she doesn't need it in this mm. we as amp guard need, it, need for it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i get that it is a a work has been done let's catch the awards up type yeah. of thing yeah i agree with that one her the data that she puts together on such a regular basis and the graphics that she uses are ha- have been and will continue to be great tools for this game absolutely 100 percent Awesome. 100%. And I, I gain nothing from that, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, I nothing there for I, I just it's one person that it if the work has been done and that they they should have that. It's I think it's lightning. Mm. Cool. Well, Kodiak, Grand Duke, Kodiak. What was the what was the title I missed? Monster of the Sand. Monster of the Sand. Thank you very much for coming on tonight. I had a good time. This was a good interview, sir. Of course. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, again, oh, if 
sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if there's anyone that has any more questions like about what's going on, feel free to reach out to me. If you're looking to come on kingdom of Kodiak, uh, and just want to talk for like an hour and a half about goofy stuff and maybe talk about something serious, do that. Um, I usually do it Wednesdays at seven mountain time, which is nine o'clock Eastern time for, for everyone else or for not everyone else, but for <laughs> the majority of people. Um, and I, I take all comers. So plug your uh, plug your red bubble oh uh yeah so our kingdom is doing a red bubble right now to do some fundraising because as some of you might know many of you should uh dragon's fine just completed the floating crown process not too long ago and we're trying to develop kingdom coffers uh and the first idea was to start making some um dragon's fine inspired red bubble items such as backpacks and pins um it's not that big but oh no (laughs) <laughs> kingdom of kodiak pin and oh, yeah. uh there's uh so, some of the all the park heraldries are there there's some uh fighting companies and households that have some gar- uh, um materials up there as well there's kingdom cool. of kodiak merch uh and all of it's just going to help uh dragon spine get to the point where we can finally fund stuff on our own um along with we're doing a fundraiser on the side of that uh where again if if uh, Bearzilla, which is mine and Deverick's team, gets to three hundred dollars, um, I will f- I will finally cut my ponytail. <laughs> uh, Deverick's actually going to cut it off with a sword. Um, That's cool. I'll do the the spicy chip challenge, the spicy salsa challenge, the pie to the face, the ice bucket challenge. Wear Crocs to five courts that the kingdom's going to pick. Like we're ju- I'm, I'm putting myself out there and willing to be humili- humiliated for dragon spine so if you have any interest in-